Welcome back. Larry Lua uh, Babalovi joins us on the program. He will be traveling around Africa, uh, not just traveling around. He wants to do it as the fastest man to do so around the continent. We have 54 countries. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Jeffrey. We have a lot of drivers. You're the second driver that is coming on the show. Like, Sorry, there's I an avalanche of drivers. I couldn't help this. Oh, really? Because the goal is for him to uh, <laughs> take this across. To, the take African this across, across the continent. The so let's just drape this around your shoulder. Okay. Uh, okay. I think that's so, look good. I think I'm going to have to correct you. Beats, I'm not driving. All oh, right. So there you go. Okay, that's beautiful. Ah, this is how I'm going to a take true my Nigerian picture. spirit. <laughs> so this is how you take your picture. Yes. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Very, very patriotic. So, Absolutely. what's the motivation? Hmm, where do I start? Um, okay, there are several motivations. The first is personal. I am... I like traveling, right? So I've been traveling for nearly 10 years. Like, even when... You see how I was brought up. I was brought up in the east, in the north, and in the southwest of Nigeria. So before this, I've gone to all the 36 Nigerian states. I've gone to the 16 regions of Ghana. I think I'm the only person that has done every state in Nigeria and every region in Ghana. I've been to over a dozen African countries. And I've been trying to travel to all African countries for maybe over 10 years. But on this trip, I'm going to be raising money for the Nigerian Red Cross. I was at their headquarters yesterday to sign the MOU. And then I'm going to be promoting the Borderless Africa campaign. I think I'll have more to say about that as the show goes on. So it's packed for you, exactly. It, I can it's see, a lot it, of it, things. So, so in terms of, sorry, I have to go straight to that. In terms of funding, because it's expensive to do all of this. It is I wanted to get our funding expensive. off my chest. It is uh, not Because when we had uh, Bellumi here, she talked about almost 30,000, is it pounds or dollars now? I can't remember that the is incredible. Uh, so, <laughs> so have, you, have you done the estimation and how much before we get to other details? Oh, yeah. Okay, so two things. Um, number one is, okay, so I applied for the Guinness World Record about nearly a year ago. So I've been planning for that since then. Secondly, I have been practically saving for this for a long while. Um, one thing I'm going to spend five figures in dollars, not low five figures. Oh, wow. But um, I have a couple of advantages. Number one is that um, I have been to about a quarter of African countries, and in most of these places, I have somewhere to stay. Um, okay. Number two is, like I corrected you, sorry, I am going by a road, so I'm not taking a personal car. I'm going by public transport to all the countries. Oh, oh, you're not driving. I am not driving. I am so going by So you're taking a road public transport one from... by one. So you see more of the country, you see more of the countryside, you talk to more people. So now that's very, that's a bit confusing. Like, um, <laughs> okay, like, my, my, my colleague will take off is, that. What part is confusing, Jeff? No, look at, uh, you know, if you're driving, yeah. the issue of fastest comes into being mm. control. But perhaps he wants to do fastest in terms of commuting. Is that the record? Okay, and um, Guinness World Records they don't accept um, challenges with your own personal vehicle because then it looks like a race. So I guess for legal reasons, they don't accept races on public roads. So any time you see any record that involves fastest, you have to take public transport. As a matter of fact, one of my regulations is that throughout the trip, I am not allowed to take private transport. One of the... No... Uh, yes. No... Only public. So I could take okay. Ubers, I could take... Um, I could the charter other, cars, yeah. I could charter public transport, but I cannot use my own public transport, which is fine because I was just going to use public transport before. I wasn't going to use private transport before, sorry. I'm going public transport throughout. So it's, it reduces the cost a little bit. And then um, I, I have one or two sponsors, not so many, but <laughs> um, most of the money is coming from my funds or from my friends, friends' funds, personal funds. Five figures. In, in dollars, dollars not in dollars. Yeah, is still at that point. So that's <laughs> tens of thousands of dollars. Yes. I, I don't know Over if Over nine months. It's, it's a lot, but... Um, I, I don't know if you, you get this from family and friends, you know, but... <laughs> the, the question that keeps going through my mind is, what are you looking for? <laughs> <laughs> that's to go and enjoy mother's question. <laughs> that's What's your problem? <laughs> You're not hungry again, have you? <laughs> It's not just family and friends, it is, you know, I don't say everybody because I think overwhelmingly the response has been positive, 
But um, you see, you have the occasional negative response. I mean, I've had people. Okay, so this is negative, right? That uh, are you looking for gold? Yeah, <laughs> some are even worse. I've had people predict my demise in oh, Somalia or Sudan. No it's not. It's terrible. They're like, once you pass there. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> People live in these countries. I mean, you don't, you're not just going to get to some of these countries you think are unsafe, and you're not going to vaporize the second you get there. I mean, if you look at Nigeria, so like I said, I've been to all the 36 states. As a matter of fact, there are only eight states I've been to just once. So the average states I've been to maybe three times or more. Nigeria is supposedly an unsafe country because, I mean, we have insurgency in some parts of the country, but we are in Nigeria, I'm in Nigeria, and we are not dead yet, so you, with proper research, with um, proper planning, and a bit of courage is very possible, and one of the things I want to do and show is that Africa is safe to travel. I am big on that. Fantastic, and you've talked about the borderless uh, Africa, oh, yeah, yeah. and I know we've talked about this a lot, how traveling through or within Africa can be a headache. It's sometimes easier to travel out of Africa. Let me take that again. It's most times easier to travel exactly. out of Africa than, it's easier, than it is traveling within Africa. And we're talking about after doing business with ourselves, how we need to be one. If our others see Africa as just one country, but when you come to Africa, you yeah, realize you that it's, it's a whole continent. Absolutely. So you are big on that. But I'd like you to speak to us about the process. Because traveling to these countries, you obviously have to get some documentation. I know you've been in the nation's capital for quite some time trying yeah, to get visas. documentations, visas, and the rest. So walk us through that process. Because, again, this will be part of the things we're trying to rectify. So just how easy, I don't want to say how hard, <laughs> that's a set of questions. How easy was it to get documentation for those countries? Okay. Um... I think the first thing I'm going to say is that I'm going to be a little cautious here because um, <laughs> some of these countries, I'm still going to go to them and I don't want to get um, bad blood. Yeah. But um, huh, it's been a whole lot. So I am traveling with a Nigerian passport. That's the first thing people should realize with only a Nigerian passport. Theoretically, it is not very difficult to travel to African countries with only a Nigerian passport. I said theoretically. So you have about six to eight countries that might give you issues. Um, some, there are some countries that at some point they stop giving visas to anyone. There are some countries that maybe Nigerians have not gotten a good reputation. Um, but um, for most countries, it's somewhat straightforward. Now, there are about, of the few African countries, about one third of them are visa free to Nigeria. That's about 19. Mm. Another one third are visa on arrival or e visas. Roughly one third. Now, the ones that require you to get visas, hmm, <laughs> some of them are a lot. So, I can give an example. There are about four countries that applied for their visas. So, this is not here, see, I applied for them. And in total, the costs were, were like maybe a million uh, or close to just four countries. And that included things like having to get an invitation letter, having to, okay, I mean, the account statement is standard. Yeah. Having to get an invitation, having to, um, some will ask you to justify why you're coming. Mm -hmm. um, I have been detained in a country before. Again, I don't want to mention the name. Because you're going back there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been detained in the country before for the person, the cops saw my stamps and they were asking me, why am I traveling to so, so many countries? Like, what am I doing? Am I a terrorist? <laughs> I, was, I slept in a cell. Oh, wow. So, yes, for a little while. So what did you day. tell them? That, you didn't explain that you're a tourist or a Pan-Africanist or whatever I it is? I totally did. And there were several and, problems. And they and the you. explanation didn't suffice. Nah. There were several problems, including the fact that they, they don't speak English then. And mm. then my French was a lot worse than it is now. I hope it is better now. Nah, somewhat. And there are AI tools that can help you. <laughs> so, so, um, okay, okay, go ahead. So, um, the African campaign is important to me because, like I said, I've been around a bit to Africans, even in countries where we have um, free movement, ECOWAS. You still have some challenges. You still have 
But that guard's trying to, you know, collect payments and stuff off the hook. But I think that's even more straightforward. <coughs> The ones that the most serious issues for me are currently that you have to pay something like $400 to get a visa. <coughs> because if a person has $400, they are most likely not going to want to come to an African country. They may go to Paris instead or Dubai. So why is country A charging citizens of country B to come to their country and country B is doing the same thing for them? It's, it's absurd. You might as well just go to China. So let's, let's put a fact sheet to, <coughs> excuse me, some fact sheet to, <clears throat> to all of this. Um, okay. How long will it take? <sighs> so at the start, I said by saying six months, but um, it's going to take a lot more than six months. If I am very, very fast, it's going to take nine months because I plan to spend about four or five days in each country. So in each country, I'll visit the tourist areas, the explore the culture, Africa has a lot of things that <laughs> I'm sure will blow your mind. I can tell you for a fact. Um, so, nine months is the minimum, but it might take a year. So, hmm. I'm going to be on the road for nine months. That's, that's a long time, and it's a big challenge. 54 African countries, north, south, east, west. Oh, yeah. But the objectives are, you know, altruistic in nature, you know, um, promoting the borderless uh, uh, Thing about Africa, but do you, don't you think that simply raising awareness by your uh, tour around Africa is simplistic in achieving these uh, laudable objectives without policy backup at the regional level? You know, for uh, the different regions of the continent. Um, so the thing is, you never know. <laughs> you never know what. I mean, you never know what your efforts can translate into. So. I think I should mention that the Bolivia Africa campaign is sponsored by an African NGO, that's Africans Rising. And um, we are going to be having a few conferences. I hope I'll be in the countries when that is happening around Africa. So um, sometimes, you know, a little spark <laughs> can change a lot. But another thing is that many Africans do not some Africans don't even know how difficult it is to go to that African country. So, I mean, if we can tell Africans that, see, look, I'm coming to your country and this is what I'm facing, it might be more stark for them, it be more easy for them to say, tell their lawmakers, their parliamentarians, and um, their leaders. Um, but I also have, I am also likely to meet some um, government officials yeah. on the way. Oh, brilliant. So, Fantastic. Um, there, there are a couple more questions, uh, oh, besides okay. the are you crazy question <laughs> that I'm sure a lot of people are asking right now. By the way, if you've got questions for Hilary, you know where to send them to WhatsApp and online. He has his backpack here, I should say. The journey begins today, yeah. April the 16th, oui. and it's going to take at least nine months, hopefully. If I am fast. If you are fast enough yeah. to so go April, across May, all June, of the July, African August, countries. 54. So African, we're expecting you... 54 African countries. Next yeah. year, early next year. December, uh -huh. early next year. Okay. So speak to me about <laughs> family, because I need to Sorry. be clear. Uh, your parents, uh, <laughs> your siblings, uh, what is going... What went through their mind? Uh, maybe they, they know you to be an eccentric person. A lot of people might remember you. Uh, you want, who wants to be a millionaire show? Do you know me you, to be an eccentric person? You want a million naira. We're watching the show. Uh, it was quite evident. So tell us. Uh, did you even sell property? I need to know all of these strings attached. First, family. Okay. How are your parents, perhaps your siblings, taking this? Um. Have they disowned you for the <laughs> meantime? And then talk to us how you also, what this is costing you personally. Did you sell stuff and the rest? Uh, how are my parents taking this? Uh, my mom right now is still... Uh, <laughs> I got a funny text message from her. <laughs> This morning, I'm not going to see the contents, but I've been getting those kinds of messages. So I think my dad is more, you know, accepting, uh, but my mother, uh, I have to really, really, really convince her. And okay, so I can give an example. I told her I had gotten detained in an Afghan country before. And so, okay, my mom is, she has a French doctorate from, I mean, she's, yeah, she's a French, she has a, she, she's a lecturer. And um, so, when I got detained, I told people, right, but I didn't tell my mom deliberately because um, I didn't want her to worry. But um, when it looked like 
they really, really wanted to keep me there. So I had them call my mom. And of course, she's, she's a professional. I mean, they could even see from her voice that she knew. So I think maybe that contributed to how fast they let me go because um, she spoke French better than them. So um, that is how bad I tried to keep things away from her. <laughs> like, I was detained and I didn't tell her. And you needed her help, yes, but you didn't tell so. her. But um, I think, again, I have advantages. One, like I said, it's not my first time. So after I went to Sydney, I think that's around when I first started traveling. So I went to 36 um, states so, you know, in Nigeria. And um, they right. were getting used to it. Getting used to it. There's a lot to talk about. I want to know way. if you sold. Did you yeah. sell Did you sell anything? Yes, definitely. I had a restaurant. I sold. It. You sold your restaurant to travel. Okay, uh, okay, maybe let's wrap up on this <laughs> because all of us are curious. Uh, in terms of your safety and security, are you putting up any measure? Is there any special? Are you talking to the embassies? What exactly are you doing? In 30 seconds. Okay, um, first of all, I'm traveling alone, so there's no, it's me and God, right? Um, yeah, I have some safety precautions. I'm not going to say all here, but mm. um, the first is the Red Cross is really helping me. They've been very, very helpful. So in most countries I go, I'll probably liaise with the Red Cross of that country. Then there are common ones like um, not telling people your next location. So um, even in my videos, there's going to be four day gap or five day gap or something like that. And then, you know, avoiding night travel, mm -hmm. asking questions and stuff. But again, like I said, right. I've gone on a three month road tour before, 11 countries. So. Oh boy. Wow. I think. <laughs> where, are you going, where are you going to first? Yeah. I can, can tell you that Benin Republic. Uh, oh, Benin first. Mm. Yes. Okay. Okay. So and you'll be doing this life. live. You'll be showing your definitely uh, your updates from time. Yeah, on to time. YouTube. Ileri Babalobi. That's my YouTube. That's okay. my Instagram. That's my YouTube. Ileri Lua Babalobi. Thank you so much for coming. Wish you the best. I know that for, for the records, his bags are packed. From here, I guess he's heading out to I don't know what is it going, whether he's going to use BRT to somewhere or <laughs> Molwe. I don't know. I don't know how he's going to do it. But was well, thank you. I wish you the very best. We're expecting you back in December, January, or less than that. Thank you for trying to make sure that Africa is seen around the world Thank uh, you as a safe place. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. Well. Oh, boy. Ah, well, we have, we, we, we you go to have some messages, messages yeah. here. Uh, I think, let me take this one from Emmanuel. He said, the prices of things once gone up in Nigeria are not coming down again. I believe the laws of gravity does not work here. Uh, a bag of Gary here in Port Harcourt is 100,000. It's more costly than when dollar was almost 1,800. Well, this one is from Comrade Mohammed Sani Abubakar from Federal University of Wukari in Taraba State. And he says, I would like to say the federal government needs to step in on agricultural production from the states. Those people employed in the Ministry of Agriculture need to be productive off season. I can't be paying people that aren't productive. We can't say that enough, can we? And this next one is from Akodi um, Bainu State from Engineer Larry Jiboy. He says, yes, Naira appreciates against dollar. Impact not yet seen as inflation increased from 22 in February to 33 in March. It says the concern is decisions being taken by government now with this situation will make it difficult to bring down the cost of production and hence inflation. So it breaks it down across electricity tariff, 60 kilowatt hour to over 200, over three times. This will affect cost of production, production I should say. So the point here is that we should not take a permanent decision on temporary situation and um, or you see the message goes on and on. And we not use the temporary situation to do national long-term project <laughs> financial calculations. Quite a lot, uh, but you get yeah. the point. But this is where we draw the curtains, and it's important to reiterate that a government needs to come clean on inflation. It's been said that we're even paying more at this time, and there are people who back that up, not just former governor of Cardinal State, even those who are in the sector. So government shall come out and be clean to Nigerians for the good of everyone. Well, that's the show for today. I'm Kayode Okikele. Thank you for joining us. Well, a positive one for Ilirio Lua. Pelumi made it and uh, Coach Dre also made it swimming the entire uh, length of uh, Third Midland Bridge. So we hope to see him back as we raise and rally African mothers to pray for his safe return. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We will be back again tomorrow. I have Bukola Koka. And don't forget, Sunrise Daily is off next. Thank you for watching. I'm Jeffrey Uzama.